story that's not told, uh, that needs to be told, uh, as we celebrate uh, Johns Creek and, and our anniversary now, 10 years, is how all that came to, to be. Um, certainly the community out here and their will to have some form of self-governance uh, drove it, but as their representative in the General Assembly, I was tired of serving in the, major the minority party, and so I decided to, to run for leadership position in the Republican caucus, and uh, in doing so, campaigned across the state to try to get a majority to try to change being the minority party because it was the majority party at the time that prohibited any new cities from existing. We tried, Sandy Springs tried for many years uh, without success uh, to create a new city and only because the change of the majority uh, were we able to, to create this city and those involved in that process are the ones I think we tend to forget as to, it just wasn't you, you instant breakfast where you just mix it in a bowl and suddenly you have, have a new city. There were a lot of foot soldiers, a lot of my colleagues, a lot of state representatives from all around the state they didn't even know where Johns Creek was or North Fulton was, never visited the area, that we were able, once we get, got the majority, to convince them, tell, tell them our story, and convince them that there was a need to create a new city, which hadn't been done in many, many years in Georgia. We formed a number of taxpayer groups in North Fulton County because there were so many problems um, out here. We were overtaxed. We had issues with, with you know, being taxed and paying for urban projects that we never got any benefit from. And um, we had a county commission that uh, sort of orphaned this side of the county. And we had a majority of the commissioners, there's seven commissioners in Fulton County. Four of the seven could live 60 miles away from here and make a decision uh, about a zoning in the entrance to your, at the, the entrance to your neighborhood. They could change the value of your home, your single largest investment. And we couldn't even vote for these people. Uh, we had our district commissioner and we had an at-large commissioner. So clearly we had no representation, no voice at, at Fulton County, and some horrible land use decisions that were being made. Uh, so uh, from that, the, a number of taxpayer groups got together, formed, and started to fight Fulton County government. And simultaneously, a, a new legislative seat came available because we had grown so much from 1980 to 1990 that um, we got more representation in the state legislature. Uh, a new seat became available. I ran for it, won it, and um, served in it for 18 years. For the first time in 134 years, Republicans had control of the General Assembly. I, I think the greatest thing we, you know, we ought to be talking about as we celebrate this 10 years of, of this great city that we have um, is that the original charter, the original law that was set out that formed the city of Johns Creek had restrictions in it. And one restriction that I put in there uh, because I felt passionately about was that Johns Creek as a city could not charge you more on your property tax bill than what you were already being charged when you were in unincorporated Fulton County. Uh, being charged in unincorporated Fulton County and not getting any real services for it. But if you look back now 10 years, this city has, has, has not only blossomed, but was able to, to, to form a police department, a fire department, have parks, have cultural centers, take care of their own roads, and do that under the law restriction that I put into the charter uh, with the same amount of money or less. They've actually used less than their maximum millage that, was, uh, that is allowed under the law. But they were able to build a whole city and not charge anybody any more money. Now we have security, uh, police and fire response times, which are, are, are national standards. And we have a government that you can call up and get a response from and versus a, uh, a voicemail and an unreturned call down to Fulton County. So we did all that with, without raising taxes, and I think that's something that's pretty impressive. When I grew up here and went to elementary school here, again in this building, I would ride my bike um, up here. I would literally come out of my neighborhood, which fronted, which actually dumped out onto Medlock Bridge Road, State Route 141. And I'll never forget, there was portions of it that were paved, portions of it that were gravel. But 
I would literally just ride out onto the road and never look left or right because we never saw cars. And it was, it was that dramatically uh, um, country uh, compared to what we see now is just, I mean, before and after pictures is the only way you can tell that story because most people, when I say it, just don't believe it. Um, but, you know, coming to school here uh, to show you how sparsely developed this area was, uh, this little elementary school had first through seventh grade and we had probably a total of uh, 40 students here that served an entire community. Uh, first through seventh grade, only 40 students. My graduating class was um, a total of uh, seven, seven students. Uh, there was two boys and five girls. So I think that really tells you how dramatically the, this area um, exploded in growth and, and um, how much has changed. But literally this intersection of State Bridge and Meadowlock Bridge Road uh, was, I mean, there was people used to hunt dove, annual dove shoots were right across the street. And um, there's an old uh, gold mine shaft over there near Perimeter, we're on Perimeter Church property. Um, and people don't know that part about this community. At one time, there was a little bit of gold found out here. Um, I'd like to think some of it's sitting under some of my properties, but haven't struck it just yet. But uh, it, it's just, to see it change, it, it's been a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of pride to see it have quality development come in. Because if you're going to go from seeing country and, and appreciating all that to having buildings everywhere, it's, it's nice to have quality um, developments, quality neighborhoods, and, and the quality schools we have, which really was the biggest spark we had growing uh, North Fulton and, and Johns Creek. My, my wish for the next 10 years for Johns Creek is for them to just keep being themselves and um, look back on the, the last 10 years, the success that, that we've had, uh, this wonderful community, uh, that, that's been created and, and been sustained because we have a, a city government that responds to us versus a county government that didn't respond to us. The, the opportunities in Johns Creek are absolutely endless because of the people that are here uh, and the people that have chosen this area to, to be their homes. Uh, that's what makes a community is the people. This is Mark Burkhalter wishing the greatest city in Georgia, Johns Creek, a happy 10th anniversary.